Diving is a gear intensive sport. The further you go in your diving education, the more gear you eventually need. Until one day you've got to get a rebreather, three or four bailout tanks, and an underwater scooter into the water. And you start to think to yourself, do I really want to bring a camera on top of all of that? So I've been on the hunt for a new underwater camera, specifically something that performs well when shooting video. I needed something that wasn't massive. So going out and purchasing like a Panasonic GH5 or a Sony A7S III was just not really in the cards financially and size wise with all the gear that I've already got to schlep into the water on my shore dives, which that's what I mostly do, shore dives. I just didn't want something too big. I wanted something compact that could fit on my DPV because shooting video on a DPV is so awesome. When you attach your camera to something big like that, it makes it heavier and less prone to micro jitters. So you get more stable video and a DPV can actually sort of act like a dolly underwater if you use it properly and you get some really cinematic looking shots. So I wanted something compact. I've been looking at a camera called the Panasonic LX10. It was touted as a small, compact camera with SLR-like controls and a larger sensor than most compact cameras. And when a decent deal on a camera and housing package came my way, I decided to pull the trigger. Since I hadn't seen any video reviews on specific housings for the LX10, I decided I'd make my own. I went with the Isoda housing for the LX10. Isoda is an Italian housing manufacturer. They make housings out of aluminum that are rated down to 100 meters. The build quality on this housing is amazing. The aluminum is beautifully machined and anodized. I'm no expert in machining aluminum, but I do have a lot of experience in 3D printing. And there are some 3D printed parts on this thing and the quality of the prints is impeccable. Isoda seems to really take pride in their manufacturing capabilities. This is a really nice housing. The design is excellent as well. You've got two lugs on one side that fit into their slots, and then there's a single lug on the opposite side that goes into a locking wheel that actually closes the housing for you. And it also opens it as well, which can be very helpful. And overall, the housing just feels super robust. The controls are all well-placed and easy to access. Although if you're a dry suit diver who's commonly wearing big dry gloves, you might have trouble with some of the buttons on the back. But if you're shooting an automatic and just pressing the shutter, it'd probably be just fine. The alternative to this housing would be the Nauticam housing. Unfortunately, Nauticam has ceased production on their housing for the LX10. So if you want one, you'll have to go to the used market. Nauticam also sounds like a website that you'd have to switch to incognito mode before visiting. I can't be the first person to notice that. As far as image quality goes, I don't think I could be much happier. The Isoda has good optical quality glass so that the LX10 inside can do its job and it does its job well. The LX10 may not have an APS-C or full frame sensor, but it does have a fairly large one inch sensor, especially when you can compare it to other compact cameras. It's the same sensor size as the Sony RX100 and is significantly cheaper. It's a 20 megapixel sensor and it can shoot up to 10 frames per second in stills mode, which is pretty freaking fast for a compact camera. 
the video is what I was really interested in on this camera and it looks great. It shoots up to 30 frames per second in 4K, which is good enough for me. The lens is focal range, 24 to 72, which is great. It's fairly wide and it also gives you a pretty tight shot if you want to get a close up on a fish. And one of the best things about it is it's able to get pretty high white balance values, which is great. You can't do that with the Sony RX100, so the deeper you go, you can't white balance properly. With this camera, you can. The lens's aperture range is f1.4 to 2.8, so it's 1.4 when the lens is wide open, and when you're zoomed in, it's 2.8, which is fantastic for a small camera like this. 1.4 is absolutely massive and lets a ton of light in. Apertures that wide really help you to get that nice blurry background and, and separate your subject from the rest of the shot, which is awesome for composition. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the camera, but there are a few drawbacks worth mentioning. Unfortunately, you can't shoot log and you can't shoot 60 frames per second. So because you can't shoot log, you don't have quite as much control when you're color grading in post-production. But if you set it for a flat color profile and do a decent job of nailing the exposure and white balance, you're really not gonna see too many issues not having log. No 60 frames per second in 4K is Kind of a drag but at this price and at this camera size i'm really willing to accept it i can still shoot 30 frames and tone it down to 24 in post and get a little bit of slow-mo which is nice you also can't manipulate the focus ring underwater in the isota housing i'm not sure if you can in the nonacam housing either that'd be kind of nice but to be totally honest i'm not super worried about <laughs> pulling focus manually underwater. I'll let the camera help me out a little bit and do some autofocus. Before we close this review, I'd really like to talk about some accessories that would be nice to have. First of all, a tray to hold the camera is always nice. Lights or a strobe, something to help you bring that color back, or maybe even a, a red filter, whatever you like. But something that I think is really vital, especially if you're a pretty avid underwater photographer or videographer, is a vacuum check system. In my opinion, this is a must have because it really helps you be sure that your housing is sealed properly before descending. And that is worth the money. If you don't want to buy a vacuum checker, then I highly suggest you buy insurance for your camera. Everybody messes up eventually. In fact, even if you do have the vacuum checker, I would still insure it. There's nothing like peace of mind when you're 200 feet underwater. If you need an extremely compact camera with pro-level features, then I can wholeheartedly recommend the LX10 and matching ISOTA housing. It's durable, capable, full-featured, and like I said, extremely compact, making it ideal for equipment-intensive dives or as a scooter-mounted camera. So if you're in the market, take a look. I'd like to take a second to thank Dive Vibe supporters on Patreon. I could not make videos like this without you. This video was not sponsored by anyone other than my patrons. So if you'd like to support Dive Vibe and get access to some exclusive content, then follow the link to Patreon in the pinned comment below. Thanks for diving with me today, and I'll see you in the water. ideal for equipment intensive dives or featured extreme full featured it's durable capable and extremely full featured it's
It's durable, durable, capable, full-featured, extreme. It's durable. But.